Hey drivers, thanks for checking in. Today we're gonna do it. We're gonna test drive Dweezil on the road and we might even be legal when we do it. <laughs> so stay tuned. Did you see it? Do you see it behind me? I don't I don't mean Dweezil. Of course Dweezil's behind me, but do you see what's different? Finally got the glass in, so check that out. The full story on the windshield, I broke it when I was putting it in. I think we said that in the last video. So here's our old broken windshield. Found a guy named Noel with Pro Auto Glass that came by the house and popped in the front windshield for me. His trick, other than 20 years of experience and really knowing what he's doing, <laughs> is that he used the West Coast metric gasket. And I can tell that it is indeed quite a bit softer and more pliable than the one that I had. This was supposedly a quality gasket when I bought it, but I can I can tell the difference. Man, he made it look easy when he popped that thing in, which is exactly what I wanted. Now, while he was here, he noticed that I had the rear glass ready to go. It was still sitting in the garage. He saw it and he says, you want me to pop that one in too? Well, sure, I guess. Let's talk price. And so he gave me a great price on the remaining three pieces of glass. I just had to find the quarter windows and I did just in time. He got all of them put in. So now the only windows that are left are the ones in the doors and I'm gonna need to get some parts and I can take care of that. But we've got all of the fixed glass in the car. These stickers were on the car when I bought it back in 1995. I just don't have the heart to take them off. <laughs> so, so they'll stay for now. You know, getting these front and rear windows installed were actually kind of a big moment because, well, this opening was cut open, right? We sliced the A-pillar right here. Above and behind is the original 68 shell and below and forward is a 69 front clip. I did a whole lot to make sure that this window opening stayed the same size, but didn't really know if it was gonna fit until the window was installed. And so it's in and that's a relief. Same thing back here. We replaced the metal starting here and going all the way around. So the window opening was modified. We replaced some metal on the inside as well. And once again, was very careful to make sure that the window opening did not change shape. And it looks like everything has worked out. We'll see when we get it in the rain someday, see if it leaks, but it looks good. And I'm happy about that. I also have some new tires that have arrived. Look at these monsters. These are 235 tread width by 75 by 15 inch rims. In fact, I think this is by 70 here. That's just sidewall height, right? 70% of the tread width is what that 70 means. So this is gonna be just a touch taller as a result, but not that much taller. I don't know. So we're gonna see. Well, this is our version of cold. It's really more about the absence of heat. So we'll take it and enjoy a nice fresh day in the garage without humidity. Also wanna put the speedometer cable in and obviously need to get the doors in. I have an old seat belt hooked up here, but I think I'm gonna order new ones. The wiring is coming along. I showed you this piece here because this is what I want things to look like. This is what it actually looks like. I'd like to share some more details about the electrical once I clean all of this up. Like what am I doing here and here. Check this out. I'll give you a hint. This is for when I tow the car and I want the car's lights to work. So this is just a, a four pin trailer connector, right? We're doing all kinds of cool things with the electrical and I'm looking forward to sharing more of that. But for today, I may opt to leave the hood off for this test drive because it's gonna be a whole lot easier to get to all of this without the hood on. What I wanna do right now is get the speedometer cable installed. So we're gonna go from there over all of this mess through this little guy here. It'll come through the back of the spindle and poke out of this hole here. I'll need to find a little C-clip to hold it in place, but this should be pretty simple if everything's in good shape. Let's just see if we can get this thing on the road. <laughs> can you tell I'm ready to do that? <laughs> and I'm ready to take you with me, so let's get started. There's a seal for this. I need to back up a step and find that. Okay, found it. 
this little guy. This will keep sand and water out of our bearings. By some small miracle, I was able to find a C-clip. This is something I keep rolling around in my toolbox. Obviously adds some weight, but it's a reducer coupling from two inch to looks like one and a half inch. I've used this as a press fitting. That might have been for the ball joints. But from this side, it does real well. on these so I don't dip this up like you always see right people smack these with the hammer right there and they get all banged up and I'm sure that's fine but this avoids some of that drama for the doors we're just gonna focus on the latches and the locks here's all the old parts from the window regulators happy to have all of that but then there's a lot of it that just isn't gonna be worthwhile uh, I've got some door seals we can use today, but this channel stuff, this is this is all spent. And so I need to go through that, refurbish what I can, like these regulators here. But the tracks and the scrapers, they're done for. <laughs> I think I'm gonna hang the doors first and then put all the guts in there for the latches and so on. I do want to go ahead and put the strikers in place. If I can remember which direction they go. That looks about right. I think I marked these, but it doesn't look like those marks survived. <laughs> so we're going to have to figure all this out again. That's all right. This is a number three Phillips screwdriver for anybody keeping score. I think a number two would be a great way to strip these screws out. be doing some adjustment with that from what we know about how difficult it can be to get these screws out of these doors I'm gonna go ahead and chase these threads to make sure they're clean and I'll also treat the screws I've got some new ones I'm gonna treat those with a little bit of anti seize and once again for the record here we're looking at a number four Phillips screwdriver if that's news to you, you probably don't have one. <laughs> so if you're gonna mess with your doors, make sure that you put a number four Phillips screwdriver on the list. Okay, we'll get the latch put in here and then we can make Five million adjustments. <laughs> but before they worked perfect, we're going to see if we can get them to work perfect again. There's a pair of seals that go here and here that I think would take up that gap. So those are on order. First and foremost, what we want is the door to latch nice and solid. It will be nice if we can get the body lines right. So you see there's a big gap here. I'd imagine it's low down here. So we want stuff to come up this way. This body line here might be a decent indicator. We can get those lined up. Now I think when I tighten these screws, that'll pull the door in that way, which a little bit of movement here, I think is gonna make a big difference down there. That's backwards. <laughs> yeah, I imagine that'd be a problem. <laughs> I think I put the wrong one on here. better. That's what we want. So 
this body line relatively consistent up here pretty tight here but i've done a whole lot of metal work here because the car had been rolled before <laughs> so at least it's not rubbing <laughs> this is a little wide of a gap but i remember working on this and realizing you just you can't have everything unless you really 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 know what you're doing so i have this in too far. I think the gasket's going to take care of that. closed this thing is down like that then we open it like that this little rod thingy has a neat little clip to hold it in that spot except that mine on this side does not so that's on the list and we'll see if it falls out or what <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and install it to put this thing in place we want it to be as if the door was closed and not a bad idea to lock it so this rod's a little shorter. That's gonna make things just a touch easier too. I'm gonna to position our latch where we can see that hole through this hole. This way we can sneak the rod in there and then move everything into place. stays in place. There's two clicks on the cog that rotates this thing down. So one, two. So when we close the door, that's how deep it's going to go, right? It's going to be pushing against the gasket. One click, two. So that's as far as the door is going to really go. Up here, we look good. Down here, I'm sticking out. So either the top hinge needs to come out to rotate that in, or more likely the bottom hinge needs to go in. One, two. We're still sticking out pretty bad down there. I think I do need to tighten this up. Much better. Moving the striker in really helped. Okay. Neat. The hood is just sitting in place right now, but I couldn't resist getting a look at it. This is a beat up old bug, but it's coming together. Well, we're gonna finally do it. <laughs> it's gonna be a chilly test drive. We have a rare cool day here in Florida. It's in the 40s, I, I know, I know. But uh, no windows, <laughs> lots of air coming through the dash. <laughs> but we're gonna have a lot of fun anyway. So let's take this car out on the road for the first time in this state anyway, <laughs> in a long time.
impression, other than it's chilly, <laughs> that these cars are easy to drive. It's been a long time since I've driven a Beetle on the road. And uh, this one's in pretty good shape as far as the chassis is concerned. It, it drives really easy and responsive too. I, I love the mechanical feel of it. Uh, temperatures are looking good. Oil pressure is actually looking decent. I, I'm expecting problems there sooner than later, but uh, everything's good so far. I, I'm surprised the, the steering is, is great. It, it drives straight. I need to center my wheel. But other than that, I can let my hands off the wheel and it drives straight. And when I hit the brakes, it brakes straight as well. So all that's in good shape. I, I kind of want to check it anyway because I wasn't expecting that. Uh, in, in particular, the alignment. The other thing is that it's loud. Well, I am quite pleased with that. As we all know, these are fun cars to drive. I, I was pleasantly surprised by how tight and responsive the steering is. Uh, I guess that's the reward for redoing all of that stuff. And thankfully, it's, it's an approachable project. There's a lot of reasons we love these cars, and I just got to gobble up several of them. So what about VW Run 21? Well, you know, it's 22 now but I still want to make that goal. I still want to make it out to the coast and back, so I'm going to keep working on the car and getting it ready for that long of a drive. We're going to make the drive and I'm going to share it with you, so we're just one step closer today. As far as VW Run 22 is concerned, it's going to be something like this. I'd like the car to be all sealed up so I can drive it in the rain without water coming in to the cabin. Also, I want to set it up for towing behind the RV and take it somewhere. So that's probably what my VW Run 22 goal will be, is to go camping somewhere, pulling the car behind the Mosey home, and then driving around in some very interesting place where we get to go camp. So uh, that's what it's looking like for the long-term plans, but short-term, I still want to hit that VW Run 21 goal. Uh, and drive this car out to the coast. Thanks everybody for your interest and support getting to this point. Stick around, we're gonna do some more real soon and I'll see you in the next video.